Hey everybody, this is Shane with Starters Woodworking and I'm going to show you how I make these charcuterie boards which are one of my best sellers at craft shows. So stick along, I'm going to have some tips and tricks along the way and let's go ahead and get right into the video. So to start off, I'm going to be selecting my wood. And for these charcuterie boards, I'm batching them out. So I'm making around 15 to 20 of them. And I wanted to use as many different wood species as I had. So to name a few, I had oak, poplar, red mahogany, walnut, cherry, maple, and many other types of wood. This gave me an awesome gradient and color palette to use for my charcuterie boards. So once I have my wood selected, I'm going to get them planed down and processed so I can cut them into strips. So once I have all my strips cut out at various widths, I'm going to go through and mix and match and try to create as many boards as I possibly can. I'm going for around seven inches in width, so I'm going to play around with the strips I have and see what I can make up. Okay, so here are some of the designs I ended up going with. I really think they turned out nice and I'm excited to get these glued up and see what they all look like. But I really just, for some of them, like this one here, kind of just went random. Didn't have enough symmetrical pieces to make like an even pattern like this one or even this one. So I feel like someone might appreciate that though, but I really think I have a good variety of different colors and everything. And I also have four boards here that are all just one species. I have ash, poplar, red mahogany, and walnut. And I also think someone might like just a single species board. So I have another three, three here that I just, so I have three here that are ready to take out of the clamps. I have three, I done. I have three boards here that are ready to take out of the clamps. The glue is dry. I have three here that are finished up. And now I'm going to be putting three more into the clamps. So as I'm gluing the rest of the charcuterie boards up and letting them dry and running them through the planer, I just wanted to talk about efficiency in the workshop. So if you're trying to make money while you're doing woodworking, you wanna be efficient. This allows you to pump as many projects out as you can while still making quality pieces of work. Now these charcuterie boards that I'm making are for a craft show I had coming up and I was going for a range of 12 to 15. And out of all the projects, I will be making the most of these. From a past show that I've done, I've realized these charcuterie boards sell like wildfire. People love the simple yet beautiful design and oftentimes may even buy them as gifts for their friends and family. these all flat and thickness down to around three quarters of an inch. I'm going to take this plywood um, thinger <laughs> that I made, but it's basically just so I can trace the edges. I have them with a little bit of radius here. I'm not sure if you can tell, but I'm going to be placing these on each one of these to trace this around and then I'm going to be taking them to the bandsaw and cutting down the curved radius. Radii? Is it radii? I guess.
So here I'm using a Forstner bit to drill a hole in the top of the charcuterie boards. And the reason for this is it acts as just a really nice handle and an extra decoration point. Also, I was quick to move this operation outside because of the mess here. And you can see my dog Bentley is hanging out with me through the process. a good chamfer on everything my next step is going to be doing a little bit of rough sanding then spraying with water to raise the grain a little bit and then sanding all the way up through the grain up to 220 grit and then slap some oil finish on this so let's go ahead and do that For my finish, I'm just using a basic food safe mineral oil and then I'm coming back with a beeswax mixture to help seal and protect the boards as well. Alright, once all these charcuterie boards are finished up, we can talk about how I tried to sell them. So, the boards that I made in this video, I actually took along to a two day craft show that I did. I couldn't quite sure what would be a good price range to price these at, so I went in the first day a little bit high, and then I knew on the second day I could adjust it accordingly. So, my first day I priced these boards at $50 each, and I actually ended up only selling 3 out of the 18 total that I brought along with me. So the next day, I ended up lowering the price to $40, and this was a good choice because I ended up selling 10 more. So the reason I think these were so popular is because they're the perfect size and the perfect price range for people looking to buy stuff at craft shows. People can carry these around without a problem and buy them as a gift without spending an arm and a leg. So if you end up trying to make these in the future, I wish you the best of luck and I just want you to know that these are an awesome little project and a easy, great way to get started. Anyways, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you all enjoyed and maybe even learned something too. If you did, please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.